Hello, my beautiful babies, and welcome to War Club Chapter 1. In this class, we will be discussing the preface chapter and chapter 1 of John Green's The 33 Strategies of War. Uh, but before we get into it, I just want to let y'all know we got a little, a cute little merch pack for War Club called the War Pack. You can get it on my store website, danicaxix.bigcartel.com. And it comes for my domestic peeps in this cute little envelope. By the way, it's free domestic shipping. And inside, you get a little, you get a little acceptance letter accepting you into the 19 Academy. So if you always wanted a little college acceptance letter, here you go. Here you go. It's signed by me. It's super adorable, super cute. And then also it comes with a three inch 19 Academy crest sticker. Uh, I, this, uh, Jay Freeman helped me do this. So you can follow him at Jay Freeman or at Freeman the Artist on Instagram. And then also it comes with a dog tag with a 30 inch ball chain. Actually, I'm wearing one right here. And, uh, and on it, it says War Club 19 Academy 419 2020. Know the enemy, know yourself. So uh, you can get that if you go to my store, people on Twitch, you can go click on the little store link below. Uh, there's a little deal there for you. So yeah, uh, if you want to support the class, this free online class, then uh, the War Pack is one great way to do it. So uh, yeah, so let's get into it, fellas. Let's get into it. All right. So in the War Club preface chapter, uh, this chapter preached a few different things just to get you started. Got some things, uh, some, some little, little helpful hints for you. One of those is to look at things as they are, not as your emotions color them. It's very important to become the master of our emotions. And not just fear, uh, but also love. I mean, a lot of times love blinds us to the enemies around us. So make sure you are looking at things uh, as they truly are. You look at reality instead of how your emotions color them. Okay, it's very important to master those emotions. They really get away from us, you know? I mean, they get away from me all the time. Also, judge people by their actions and take personal responsibility for your own actions, okay? Don't judge people by what they say because they'll tell you anything you want to hear, right? They will tell you anything you want to hear to shut you up and get their way. It is better to look at their actions and judge them by those things. And at the same time, also take responsibility for your own actions. You are responsible for the shit in your life. All that is good and bad comes from you. And so instead of uh, taking the the reactionary victim approach, oh, it's so-and-so's fault and shifting the blame here and there, take personal responsibility for your actions. Number three, depend on your own arms, arm your mind for war, okay? You can have all the money, all the allies, all the gadgetry in the world, but that can all be taken away from you. And the only thing that can't be taken away from you is your mind. And if you prepare your mind for war and you have that warrior spirit, you will be able to get yourself out of just about any pickle you get yourself into. Now, it's also important to worship Athena, not Ares, the Greek gods of war. Uh, Athena was the goddess of strategy and wisdom. She was a protectress of the arts, whereas Ares, uh, that guy was just an angry bitch, okay? Unchecked aggression. So when we talk about war, when we talk about warfare, we're not talking about being a crazy, unchecked, aggressive asshole. We are talking about being wise and using strategy to protect important things. Uh, number, what is this? One, two, three, four, five. Elevate yourself above the battlefield. Use long-term goals to help you see the big picture. It's important to set long-term goals for yourself so that you have a direction to move in, so that you can choose better which battles are worth it and which ones to walk away from, okay? You've got to be able to, again, get yourself out of that reactionary mode, have a direction you're going in, and that will help uh, keep you on the path. And lastly, uh, spiritualize your warfare. Forge a warrior spirit by declaring war on yourself. Strengthen your weaknesses, hone your skills, and invite challenge. You need to know that life is a struggle. 
Life is pain, okay? It's not supposed to be easy. It's never been easy. It never will be easy. It's always going to be some shit. So it's on you to uh, embrace this and know that this conflict is good for you. Hone your skills. Root out your weaknesses. Make yourself into a warrior. So moving on to our chapter one. Uh, Chapter one is declare war on your enemies. It is the polarity strategy. Now, the inner enemy, like like Xenophon and the Greeks, give yourself direction, overcome infighting and confusion when you name your enemy. There's a whole story about how these guys went into Gre- or went into Persia. They were mercenaries. They got fucked over by Cyrus. They were surrounded by the enemy. They had to get out. They were being jerked around by the Persians. And Xenophon finally stood up and he was like, "Hey guys, these guys are dicks. Okay, like fuck these guys. We gotta do. We gotta declare war on these motherfuckers to get ourselves out of this pickle. Okay, we are in. A- we are fully inside a pickle right now. We've got to get out." And so by declaring the Persians as their enemies, they woke up out of their stupor and their confusion and their fighting amongst each other and their whining and were able to successfully get out of Persia and get back home. Now, with the outer enemy, like Margaret, like Margaret Thatcher, stay an outsider. Instead of chasing popularity with people pleasing, polarize others by sticking to your ideals. And although Margaret Thatcher is not a very likable person, and like there's a lot of there's a lot of hatred towards her person, which I understand, I find myself vibing with this strategy really hard. Okay, a lot of people get caught up in the numbers game. They need oh, I need to have more and more followers on my Twitter or my Instagram or my YouTube channel or my Twitch channel. Uh, I I want to I want to do things to get more followers. I want to please those people. I want to uh, what what can I do to get more people to come in? And I just I feel like quality over quantity uh, has worked really well for me. Instead of chasing those numbers, uh, and instead sometimes doing things that in fact I know will lose me numbers. <laughs> I've done plenty of, I've pulled plenty of stunts and put plenty of opinions out there that I was like, oh no, I'm gonna lose followers over this, and I have. But it culls the herd. It's like a fruit tree. Like you gotta you gotta prune the branches back so that you get better fruits. Okay, it's about quality, not quantity, and servicing the the true fans and the true followers that you have. Uh, versus always trying to do something to please some potential follower out there. Uh, That's never really been the path. And also, too, I mean, staying an outsider has really worked well for me. Uh, I had the opportunity to become more of an insider, do more hosting. Uh, I worked for Disney doing a hosting job. I worked for several different people trying different hosting jobs. And the further inside I got, I just hated it because it was just bullshit the the more mainstream you become the less you're able to say and you get policed and you and you're just you're at a point where you just can't say anything and if i can't say my true opinions and can't be free to express myself then what the fuck i'm just another asshole reading lines off of a teleprompter and that's not what i personally want to do um i'm not here to just get in on the inside so that I can make a bunch of money reading lines off a teleprompter. It's just, it's, uh, it's not for me. So uh, personally, I love the outer enemy strategy. Staying an outsider has worked really well for me. It's not easy. I'm not, it's not, I'm not saying it's easy. Okay. And you're never going to make everybody happy. That's another thing. People pleasing is just a path to destruction. You're never going to make everybody happy. So don't even try. Okay, just know that when you put yourself out there and you put an opinion out there, some people are going to disagree with you and that's healthy and that's natural and there's nothing wrong with it. Okay, and don't get upset about it. I get plenty of people in my comments section being like, you're fucking wrong. Fuck you, blah, blah, blah. That's okay. I we need other opinions in the world. Okay, I'm not right about everything all the time. So it's fine. Like it's in a lot of times I'm just talking about art, which is objective anyways. Um, so keys to warfare. Um, people are good at hiding their hostility. Therefore, 
be on the lookout for unconscious signs and signals that all is not what it seems, okay? Because people aren't outwardly going to be like, hey, guess what? Fuck you. I don't like you. It'd be great. It would be so, it would be such a blessing if people were like, hey, I don't fucking like you. So then you could just be like, okay, I'll just avoid you or we'll, we'll, we'll battle it out and come to some sort of conclusion on this or just agree to disagree. But no, uh, in our society, people are like, oh, everyone pretends like we're all such great friends and we all like each other when in fact, most of us don't like <laughs> each other at all and work against one another uh, underneath, you know, under, undercover, undercover. So it is important uh, to be aware of that and look for the signs and the signals that uh, someone is your enemy because a lot of times they're not going to declare themselves your enemy very easily. Like Mao, beware when someone suddenly becomes overly friendly and aggressively complimentary. Trust your instincts. If someone's behavior seems suspicious, it probably is. Okay, trust your gut. Trust your gut, okay? That is one thing that Todd McFarlane told me. I ran into him in New York once and he was telling me all about business. I don't know why he just like was downloading all this information and I was like, yes, please give me all the information, Todd McFarlane. He's such like a business spirit animal for me. I have so much respect for him as a businessman. And he, and he poked me in my belly and he said, always trust your gut, you know? And I was just like, yes, sir, yes, sir. And it's so true. Like if something seems weird, it probably is, okay? And just keep an eye on it. Just keep an eye on it. You don't have to do anything about it necessarily. Just, and then, if, you know, if someone's like usually kind of a, cool towards you or just whatever, and then all of a sudden they want to be your best friend, well, they probably want something, okay? So just like be on the lookout for that sort of shit. Also, like David, uncover a secret enemy with an ambiguous slight. A friend will let it pass, but an enemy will react with anger. So say there's somebody that you don't know likes you or you're like, I think that they might be my enemy, but I'm not sure if you pull off some little ambiguous slight towards them, which could be read kind of either way. And if they're just like, oh, whatever, he didn't show up to my party. Uh, okay. Or if they're like, that motherfucker didn't show up to my fucking party. I'm going to fuck, you know, like then, you know, that guy is like not for you. Okay. So you can, you can beat the grass and startle the snakes with some shit. Uh, like Harry Khan, you can pick a fight with sycophants to find out what side that they are really on. Say you're a boss man and you got all these people working underneath you. Generally, people are just going to agree with whatever you say, even though they don't really feel that way. And it's important to figure out how people really feel because they're going to be working in the interests of those feelings. So one of the ways you can do that is by offending them on purpose or picking a fight with them and getting them angry because when people are upset and they let their emotions take over, they tend to be very sincere with the words that come out. And so that way you can find out whether these sycophants uh, really like your idea or they have some other thing in mind, that they're some other agenda that they're trying to push. Like Cortez, give people enough rope to hang themselves. Turn a blind eye and allow enemies to expose themselves. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> I really love, I really love giving people enough rope to hang themselves where people start doing things that are kind of shitty a little bit and you're just like, you just, act, you don't react to it. You don't say anything. You don't do anything. You kind of turn a blind eye and then they go, oh, okay, they didn't react to this. And so they'll take it one step further and one step further until they clearly mark themselves out as an enemy. You know, I mean, it's one thing if someone fucks up or does something on accident, but a lot of times if you just like kind of hang back, people will reveal themselves and then you'll be like, oh, mm, I see you. And then once they go too far, you can clearly make an action and not look like you're overreacting, you know, like they'll, they'll kind of up their up there a little fuckery, you know, little by little to where eventually it'll be such obvious fuckery that you have every right to come after them. Um, like Saul Alinsky, personalize your fight with a specific figure rather than an abstract idea. Uh, this man was trying to desegregate the schools in Chicago, right? And how do you, this is such an abstract idea. Okay, we need to have everybody, all the kids going to school together, okay? We don't need to be marking out the people of color and the white people are going different. That's fucking stupid, right? 
So what he did was he found the superintendent and he kept attacking this one man. And by attacking him specifically, uh, he was able to also get like the guys who agreed with him to come out and try to support him so that he could show who those people were. And then he could like personalize his fight, you know? You want to do mano a mano. So sometimes people love drama between humans. So it's easier to have a drama between like another human than it is to just fight for some abstract idea. Uh, like Jean Piaget, see conflict as a key mental as key to mental development. Don't shrink from the idea of having enemies. Embrace it. Okay, this is it's natural. It's a part of life. It's what makes us stronger. It's okay to have conflict. It's okay to have enemies. Um, one of the things that I've reflected on from my past is, you know, I grew up with some people that like really fucked with me heavy, like fucked with me heavy, you know? And then, you know, I had a lot of resentment towards that. And I was trying to kind of clear that resentment up and like let go of some shit, you know, because it's like it's not good to carry around fucking hatred and shit all the time. It's like, eh, I need to get rid of this. This is old. This is stupid. And I was reflecting on the good that came out of these people being so challenging in my life. And that when I came to LA, which is a much, I came from Alabama to LA. Um, it, it's like, this is such a, a gnarly town, you know, like, and also working in new media, there's so many sharks, so many motherfuckers. Working on the internet is fucking crazy. Being on YouTube, putting yourself out there like that. And because I had been dealing with these other motherfuckers, they like really prepared me for all this shit that I dealt with being in LA and in new media and working on the internet. It was like, it was actually very, very helpful because of the lessons that they had taught me. I was able to uh, navigate other situations later on in life. I mean, I had one person stalking me for four years when I was a a uh, tattoo artist and leaving all these bad reviews and bad comments about me that were false. Uh, it was just so shitty. Nothing I could do about it. But then later on, when I started my YouTube show and I saw shitty comments about myself, it was like, oh, like these who ca I've been getting shitty comments about myself for years. Like, who gives a fuck? You know, and like these people don't know me and they don't know exactly what to say to really piss me off. These guys are just groping in the dark trying to find something. So in the end, that person who was trying to fuck me up just made it easier for me later on in life. And then by that time, it's like, oh, I started a fucking show and then I got plenty of trolls on there. So like, they, what are they going to do? Add another shitty comment? I mean, what's the point? So they had to give it up. <laughs> um, so uh, see it as con see the conflict as key to mental development. It really does make you sharper. Hate motivates. Also, <laughs> hate motivates. Uh, a tough opponent will bring out the best in you. Losing to a worthy opponent is better than squashing a harmless foe. Okay, and I, I feel like for me, and I wish that I kind of wasn't like this, but hate really does motivate. Like, like nothing motivates me more than a fuck you, you know, like, oh, fuck you. You pissed me off. So now I'm going to do all this shit just to prove how fucking wrong you are, motherfucker. And it like lights this furnace inside of me, this fire, and it just like really like it gets me going, man. Hate, hate motivates. It is so real. It is so real. Um, but it's, it is it important to pick a tough enemy, okay? Don't pick someone out that you can easily squash because you're not going to learn anything from that. Like it's not about bullying people. It's about sharpening yourself, you know, and like it's like when you're lifting weights, Okay, like, okay, you can you can put less weights on there and do like, oh, yeah, look how easy this is. Oh, whatever. But you're not going to be building as much muscle as you would be if you're doing heavier weights. You know, you're going to build like like bigger, heavier muscles if you're challenging yourself with like heavier weights. Now, you'll still build some muscle with the, you know, smaller weights, but it'll be like longer, leaner muscle. You know, you won't see like the, you won't see the gains. You won't see the gains. Um... And understand that being attacked is a sign you are important and your actions are making progress. Use this opportunity as an outlet to unleash your aggression in a healthy way. And that's also another thing that's like being on the internet, being a personality, 
is when people start being like, hey, fuck you, you're fucking stupid, then you know you're doing something. It's like, yes, I'm doing something. Like, if you have people saying, no, you're wrong, then that means you're fucking doing something and you're on the right track, okay? You're on the right track. You know you're on the right track if you got haters. If you don't have haters, you're not doing shit and nobody cares about you, okay? You have to, you have to piss people off. That's a part of the fucking job, okay? That is a part of the fucking job. Uh, and then when you do... When you do have that come at you and you are having a bad day, then you have someone to fight against instead of picking a fight with somebody that you love or some, one of your friends or something because you're fucking being aggressive. You can channel that aggression into somewhere where, you know, it, it, they're, they're wanting to, someone wants to fight you. Okay, go fight them. I mean, Twitter is great for that. Okay, if I'm in a bad mood, like there's so many times I'm like, I want to fucking fight with somebody on Twitter, you know, and just fight about stupid ideas and get my aggression out by, by debating strangers on Twitter. It's like silly, but at the same time, it's healthier than me, like say that aggression popping out uh, against one of my friends or my family, you know, it's like, oh, whatever. It's Twitter. That's what it's for. You know, it's a, it's a crazy place. <laughs> so it's, for, it's supposed to stab people on it. That's what it's for. It's for, it's for, for the lulls and for the hate. You know, it's such a, it's such a, again, a polarizing platform. Uh, the image of this chapter is the earth. Okay. I love at the end of every chapter, they have like a little image for you to keep in your mind to help you. And the polarity strategy is the earth. The enemy is the ground beneath your feet. It has a gravity that holds you in place, a force of resistance. Root yourself deep in this earth to gain firmness and strength. Without an enemy to walk upon, to trample, you lose your bearings and all sense of proportion. And again, it's like if you want to get stronger, you need to have resistance. There is a quote, Frank Herbert quote from Dune that says, people, there should be a science of discontent. People need hard time and oppression to develop psychic muscles. And it's true. It's true. Okay, if you live your life in comfort and nobody ever challenges you, you become soft and weak. You don't want that. You want to you want to be strong. Like you want to be a hardy motherfucker and you do that through resistance and dealing with resistance and it's a uh, healthy thing. Now, reversal, you can take this shit too far, okay? Like like as in everything, <laughs> there is there is uh too much of a good thing. And the reversal of the polarity strategy is that keep your search for enemies under control. Do not lose your grip on reality and become paranoid. Okay, don't become paranoid. Because a lot of people do that. They'll like, they'll start seeing an enemy in every shadow. And then they get all whipped up and then their emotions get away from them. And that's their downfall, you know, because they don't know who they can trust because they see an enemy everywhere. Uh, you need to keep also your suspicions to yourself. Try to do that, you know, be like, okay, this kind of, this guy seems a little weird, whatever, and then keep an eye on him. And then if nothing amounts to it, and it's like, oh, okay, they were just having a weird day. Then you don't look like a crazy paranoid person if you talk to people about it. So just like keep your suspicions to yourself until you know for certain that somebody is working against you. Um, and it talks about Margaret Thatcher taking her strategy too far. She polarized others uh, so completely and she created, created too many an enemies to manage and she never backed down. And it's like, you, you can't use that tactic every time, okay? One tactic isn't going to work every time. There are times when you need to back down. There's times when you need to back down, but this bitch was like, no, we ain't backing down ever. And it just, she created way too much, way too many enemies for herself uh, by being too polarizing. So again, it's like everything in moderation, it's great. Look, look for your enemies, find them, pick them out, know you have one, uh, but don't, don't go crazy. Don't, don't look for it. Don't look for it everywhere. Um, so, uh, yes, yes. Being uh, satanic quality, being paranoid alienates allies and allies are important. Yes, exactly. So just don't, uh, don't go crazy with it. You know what I'm saying? Don't go crazy with it. So that is our first chapter and our preface from the 33 Strategies of War. Let's take a moment to do some Q&A. It's the Q&A portion. So I'm going to take 
the first questions from my Patreon peeps. Let's take a look here. All right. So, Taylor B., which figure from history cited in this book do you identify with or most admire? I've read most of this book, but I haven't read all of it, so it's hard for me to say. Um, I do really enjoy, like, him talking about Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Like, that guy was, like, super baller. Like, he had some, like, he was a really tricky dude. But in this particular, I was surprised at how much I related to Margaret Thatcher in this particular chapter, where it was just like, be an outsider, you know, don't play the popularity game. Like, fuck those motherfuckers. I was like, yeah, bitch. Like, yeah, like, I totally agree. Yes. You know, like, I was kind of, sh like, shocked because she's not somebody who I necessarily admire as a person, but her strategies and my strategies are kind of similar. And I was like, oh, well, we're more alike than I, than I imagined. Um, Charlie Drama. For someone who has a hard time getting out of their comfort zone, what is a good first step to becoming more of a death grounder? <sighs> you just got to do it, bro. You just got to jump the fuck in, man. I mean, it's it sucks, but like you'll know like the moments are going to happen. OK, like shit's going to like pop up eventually and you just have to like be aware of it and like be ready for it. And when it happens, instead of backing down, like be like, nope, this is the time. And I'm hoping that this class will help you be able to do that because once you have strategies in mind of how to deal with this, you won't be as uh, as scared in a situation because now your mind will be armed with strategies that you can utilize that will help you in these situations so that you won't feel so uncertain. Because if you don't know how to deal with conflict at all and you don't you haven't studied it at all, then yeah, you're going to feel like, oh, I don't want to deal with this. But now that you're learning about it, I hope that it becomes, um, you become more confident in dealing with these things and just jump right into that next, jump right into that next fight, you know? Let them know. You got to let these fools know. <laughs> um, PJB. What do you think of the author's choice of examples? Are they, or let's see, well, hold on, let me start at the as the saying goes, and it's not quite correct, history is written by the victors. What do you think of the author's choice of examples? Are they standard common knowledge or are there surprising ones? And are they represented in the standard textbook, often black and white way, or do they show a more nuanced perspective that dispels myth, myths and misconceptions? The thing that I like about this book and the way Robert Greene writes and the way he talks about the people that he uh, decides to talk about is that he takes his personal prejudices out of it. Like, oh yeah, like this person was a terrible person for whatever reason, history has decided they're a shitty person or, or you know, our history has decided this, that or the other. And like, he just gets rid of all of that. And it's just like, hey, this is a strategy that this person employed and it worked. Like he doesn't talk about whether this person was a good person or a bad person. It's all about what works with him in this book. And I like that. I like that people, when people can like, you know, di divorce the, the artist from the art. Like I, I'm kind of more for that where it's just like, you know what? Everybody's kind of fucked up and nobody's perfect. And uh, everybody's kind of terrible in their own way. But that doesn't mean we can't enjoy their work or we can't get something from their work or get something from their experiences or from their strategies. Michael or Michelle Armstrong. Uh, oh, no, never mind. She's, she was just asking if we were having class today. Yes. <laughs> um, Red Sonia's chosen male. Green says, don't be rooted in the past. Do you struggle with knowing when you are rooted in the past versus applying a lesson learned correctly? Like knowing better than to burn yourself again on the same hot stove. Um, yes, actually, I have, a, I have a current situation, a current conflict that I'm like, how do I approach this situation? You know, and like I... I'm trying not to be reactionary and I'm trying to like really take a look at this is the situation and like I have taken a couple days to just like have it roll around in the back of my mind um, and I have kind of looked at the past like don't be rooted in the past but don't ignore the past lessons either um, and I've also just been like meeting with my advisors <laughs> you know, I have certain people that I call and I'm like I don't know what to do 
what would you do? These are my options. How do you feel about this? Um, so definitely, like, don't forget the lessons of the past. I don't think he's saying that. Just don't be reactionary. Like, react because this in one way, you know, the past is making you reactionary because of your uh, experiences. Uh, Red Sonia's chosen male. I'm not asking you to name names, but your job is much different than most of the public's. Who do you see as your enemies in your business? Maybe just passivity is your biggest enemy. Um, my whole thing is like, I fucking hate companies. <laughs> it's just, I've had such a fucking, I just, every time I work with a company, I always regret it. Like, I'm always like, this sounds great. This will be a fun project. And then it never is. And I'm like, even though I'm always proud of the products of these relationships, the relationships themselves are generally frustrating and toxic and like fucked up. And so my whole, like my big enemy is just like staying the fuck away from the temptation of working with companies. Like just fucking stay away. Be as independent as possible. Be the outsider. Um, that's been like my whole thing. Also, And also like myself is my biggest enemy. You know, again, I just do a lot of competing with myself. And one of the things that I used to do, and that was also because I was working with somebody else who was like this, was working harder and not smarter, you know, overcomplicating things. And over the past few years, I have really like taken a hard look at myself and how I'm overcomplicating things and how can I simplify my life and make things easier on myself instead of being a crazy person and making my life harder for no reason because there is no fucking medal for making things harder on yourself there's no medal there's no ticker tape parade because you made shit really hard and complicated uh working smarter not harder and so that's been like my big thing against myself is like constantly checking in with myself to make sure that i'm working smarter and not making things more difficult for myself i mean i'm still gonna make I'm still going to choose a few battles here and there that are going to be some uphill battles, but I try in general to make things a little a little easier on myself because life's hard enough. 19 Academy thanks these lovely people for all of their generosity and support on patreon.com slash Danica XIX. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, ring that bell, and tell your friends. You can join me live on twitch.tv slash Danica XIX every Sunday and Wednesday for War Club at 3.30 p.m. Pacific Time. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Danica XIX.